to the next participant, the Sukuro Moroto. It's also about technology and cross cross community mm -hmm. So, assessing positive and negative outcomes of using technology in the classroom. Sukuro, can you please start sharing your screen and go ahead with your presentation? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Murad of Sufrob, and today I'm going to assess positive and negative outcomes of using technology in education. First of all, I'd like to explain what technology in education means. Uh, today, and in fact, technology is an integral part of education across the globe, almost in all countries. And uh, most classrooms and uh, teachers cannot function effectively without availability of technological tools such as laptops, interactive whiteboards, tablets, and other portable devices. Therefore, we decided to uh, assess and to ad identify the effects technology has on education. In this presentation, uh, I will cover uh, these main areas. First of all, I will talk about an impact technology has had on education and provide some statistics about countries where technology is highly being utilized in education. Then I will go to our research and its outcomes. Alongside with that, I will uh, provide some statistics about the results of our research. Finally, I will talk about advantages and disadvantages of using technology in education. And make uh, some suggestions and draw some conclusions. So uh, let's start with the effects uh, technology has had on education. First of all, uh, education has become easier and more time saving for students. Unlike in the past, in order to investigate something or research, students no longer have to visit uh, sites, for example, let's say in order to uh, discover archaeological uh, tools, or they don't have to browse through countless books by wasting their precious time. They can access any type of information at the touch of the button using their uh, devices, their laptops, for example, and uh, access any kind of information through the internet. Secondly, educate, uh, technology has made uh, education more convenient uh, for students. It is no longer a must for students to carry heavy bags with uh, textbooks and uh, educational equipment in it. Since children can store all the books and uh, even their notebooks and other uh, equipment uh, in their tablets or laptops, that has become possible and uh, it is a big convenience for students in my opinion. And finally, it has made the process of education more uh, efficient. Uh, uh, in this case, I mean uh, that children can access any information without difficulties, which means that the learning process will become easier and more effective for students. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what about long-term effects of technology on education? Uh, first of all, education is possible everywhere across the globe. Even people from remote and impoverished areas who don't have access to any public or private schools can actually acquire knowledge using uh, like uh, MOOC uh, software uh, programs such as Han Academy, edX, uh, uh, Coursera or Innovative Center in Tutor and many other uh, software to acquire knowledge for everyone. Uh, if you know in the past, in the 18th, 19th centuries, or even in the 20th centuries, only children of affluent people could actually access education and to become smarter. But nowadays, even people who cannot uh, afford to pay attendance costs or uh, pay for children's education uh, can uh, use uh, software programs that I mentioned earlier, which are free and provide quality education for children. Uh, and now uh, I would like to uh, talk about statistics. So uh, let's start with the USA. Uh, U U United States of America are the most developed in terms of use of technology in education. As you can see in 1995, only 9% of educational institutions used uh, technological devices during lessons. But by 2013, these figures had reached 35%. Uh, 
uh, and uh, they were uh, constantly growing and growing. And by 2020, at present, uh, almost 86% of all educational institutions across the United States of America harness technology during lessons. And as regards the UK, uh, the trend was similar, but uh, it was not uh, the same. Uh, just like in the USA, a uh, small percentage of educational institutions used uh, technology in 1995. However, uh, again, in this country as well, uh, a radical change happened uh, by 2013, since uh, by that time, 40% of educational institutions uh, use technology. And at present, as you can probably see, uh, almost 76% of schools, universities, colleges uh, use uh, technological devices during uh, classrooms. And finally, uh, Uzbekistan is one of the countries where your technology is uh, becoming widespread in education. And uh, the figures are rising at an alarming uh, pace. Uh, almost none of educational institutions in 1995 uh, had access to educational uh, to technological equipment, but again, in, by 2013, uh, about 20% of uh, educational institutions used uh, technological devices, and by 2020, uh, at uh, present, these figures stand at about 55%, which is a remarkable growth. Uh, so uh, we can say that uh, there was a radical change in all countries uh, in 2013. And uh, the figures rose significantly uh, from that uh, time. Um, therefore, we decided to investigate this topic. And now I'm going to talk about our research methods. We examined two classes and observed lessons uh, in uh, there. Uh, class A was fully computerized since children had access to interactive whiteboards, uh, which can be as functioned by a teacher uh, through a laptop. Then uh, they had access to the net due to the availability of Wi-Fi. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the connection, Wi-Fi connection was great in that classroom and children could easily access uh, any uh, web websites or uh, platforms uh, which are uh, free but require internet connection. Then each student had his own portable device. Uh, each student had his own laptop, tablet, or at least mobile phone. However, class B, uh, in class B, children were taught in more conventional methods. Uh, there was no interaction, uh, interactive uh, whiteboard, and children there used uh, printed books uh, and had to carry them in their bags. Uh, finally, there was no access to the internet. Even using mobile phones or laptops during uh, lessons was uh, strongly prohibited and discouraged in that classroom. Uh, but our findings were uh, quite interesting and surprising. Uh, for some reason, uh, lessons in class A were more exciting. Uh, this was due to the fact that as students say uh, they could uh, watch different instructional videos, documentaries, or cartoons, which are uh, colorful, picturesque, and intriguing for children. Secondly, their listening and speaking skills were significantly better. Uh, this was actually owing to the fact that they could listen to podcasts uh, and grasp even and learn how to grasp different uh, uh, difficult concepts. As regards their speaking skills, they could uh, listen to native speakers and imitate them, which made uh, the process more effective. Uh, however, their writing and reading skills were weaker. As students could watch everything and could access any information using the net, they uh, didn't have to exchange knowledge and opinions with each other. And as a result of this, uh, children in class A had poorer critical thinking. Which is an essential skill for academic writing. And this uh, was a main reading was that they uh, had to read from the screen or from the laptops, which was uh, important for them, as they say. <clears throat> and 
children in class B, uh, their lessons were not engaging, but classroom interaction uh, was better. In order to digest information and in order to memorize it better, and in order to supplement each other's knowledge, improve each other's critical thinking, children had to interact with each other. And Can you me? Yes, we can. Yeah, go on. Okay. Uh, so, uh, classroom interaction, therefore, in class B was better. And as a result of this, uh, writing skills of children in class B were excellent. And uh, this was the same with reading. As I mentioned before, they could read printed books, uh, which uh, made a unique impression on them. Uh, finally, their speaking and listening skills weren't as excellent as children's uh, speaking and listening in class A. Again, uh, they could not uh, watch videos and listen to native speakers, and they could not imitate the way they speak, which prevented their communication skills and listening from getting better. Uh, here are the statistics that say uh, our uh, results uh, about scores of children. In class A, uh, as you can see, uh, children scored uh, five, which was excellent uh, from reading, uh, from listening and speaking. But their reading and writing uh, were uh, satisfactory, uh, but not excellent. Uh, the figures for class B were convert, converse. Uh, they uh, excelled at reading and writing, but their listening and speaking skills were poorer. And uh, this was due to the fact that uh, they could not uh, get the same education as children in class A, as I have already mentioned. So uh, we investigated and reached some conclu conclusions. What are the advantages and disadvantages of utilizing technology in education? As regards advantages, lessons become more enjoyable for children. Uh, like children like watching instructional videos, documentaries, or different educational cartoons during lessons. And uh, this meant that they found lessons more enjoyable. Uh, secondly, it is efficient. Uh, children can access any information without difficulties or without uh, wasting lots of time. Uh, finally, uh, if children have access to uh, technology, technology and education, uh, they have an opportunity to improve their communication skills because they, uh, as a result of watching how uh, people uh, speak and how should, they, uh, how should public speaking look like, uh, they improved their own communication uh, skills. Uh, and what are the disadvantages? Uh, first of all, interaction in the classroom diminishes, uh, which makes information uh, indigestible and more difficult to memorize and uh, hinders children's uh, critical thinking. Um, and uh, secondly, this deteriorates uh, reading skills because uh, Children cannot uh, read printed books if uh, their classroom is fully computerized, uh, which is uh, quite uncomfortable, in fact. All in all, uh, technology in education has both advantages and uh, disadvantages. Also, it makes lessons more exciting and uh, more uh, informative and efficient. It uh, actually has a negative effect on some skills that are essential to succeed. So what would we suggest? Uh, I think that uh, classes should be balanced. Uh, that is to say some classrooms are too computerized, while in other classrooms, children are taught in two conventional methods. Uh, while uh, the former may make uh, lessons less interactive, the latter may make lessons quite boring for students. However, if we mix these two methods and adopt them simultaneously, we will be able to stimulate uh, classroom interaction and make uh, lessons even more efficient. Secondly, we can make lessons even more exciting for children, since uh, if they both interact with their peers and get lots of exhilaration from lessons, they will learn at a faster uh, pace than they do now. Uh, thank you for attention. Uh, this was the end of my presentation. Okay, I believe we have to turn to the question and answer session.
If you have any questions regarding this, please go ahead and ask. Yes, if there are any questions, I'm eager to answer them.